So, I finally finished the Heroes of Olympus series, which is the sequel series to Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that as a whole, I actually preferred this series to the original series. And that's saying something, because I really love the original series. I just came on here to give my quick thoughts on the five books. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth review later on down the road, but since it's fresh and I just finished it, I thought I would make this quick video. Before we start, there are going to be spoilers, but I feel like most of you have already read this series because literally every day I got at least one message asking if I had finished the series yet. I know you guys are very excited for these videos. But anyway, spoiler alert. Now, let's get into it. I think the biggest thing I enjoyed about this series that sort of made it past the original was the way it was written. It's no longer from just the point of view of Percy. We see the point of view from all different characters, which was really interesting. I was mostly excited to dive into Annabeth's point of view in the third book, The Mark of Athena, because at this point, we had seen or heard about Annabeth in seven books. So knowing her so well, seeing her point of view for the first time was really fascinating. This was especially true at the end of the third book, because we see her intelligent mind work as she faces Arachne. We follow her thought process as her brilliant mind comes up with this plan. It was also great to dive into Nico's mind, and we finally see his pain from his point of view. Nico was one of my favorite parts about this series, because his character development was beyond anything we had seen in the Percy Jackson universe so far, maybe only rivaled by Luke Castellan. He went from this brooding kid who didn't even like physical touch, to this hero who finally allowed people to break down his walls, and in the end, he actually initiates physical touch. It was also thought-provoking to see him think about Bianca, who we of course know as his sister who died in the original series. Then in the Heroes of Olympus, we see how Hazel, his new sister, doesn't really replace Bianca, but she fills some sort of broken part in Nico's heart. The new characters were all incredible as well. I think Rick Riordan, the author of the series, did an amazing job not only introducing these characters, but in that same book, developing them so much, using flashbacks and old memories to do so. And this was all possible because of the writing style that Rick chose, jumping from character to character. The new characters are all so different and original too. Piper being the daughter of a movie star, Frank being a Chinese Canadian, Leo essentially being an orphan after his mother died, Hazel being from the past like Nico, and of course, Jason being the golden boy at Camp Jupiter. They all had such rich backstories, and each one had their own motives based on those backstories. This made me fall in love with these new characters right away. I was nervous I wouldn't enjoy this series as much, especially because the whole first book was from the point of view of three random characters that we had never met before, but I immediately connected with them, and by the second or third chapter, I was so invested in what happened to them. While reading, I noticed that a lot of the new characters could connect easily with some of the older characters. Jason and Percy are both the golden boys at their respective camps. Hazel had the same experience of being plucked from the past and being put in the future just like Nico. And Piper was a lot like Annabeth, dating the golden boy, but proving to be a strong, independent woman who takes charge on her own. Each of these connections have some great development too. It was only natural that Percy and Jason would butt heads at first. They were both used to being looked up to and being seen as the most powerful person. So meeting each other and being almost equals, it created a natural rivalry. Seeing them go head to head was thrilling, but it's their friendship that develops in the end that really intrigued me. They gain a mutual respect for each other, and though they're still competitive, they become good friends. And the same can be said for Piper and Annabeth. They both grow very close and become literal best friends. As for Hazel and Nico, we see them bond over their similar situations in life, and ultimately, they become a very strongly connected sibling duo. Also, I can't go without talking about Reyna. She had a very rich backstory as well, basically being through hell and back with her sister Hilla. But my favorite part about her character was her dynamic with Nico. They were both very reserved, but they got each other to open up and get vulnerable really for the first time for both of them. Another thing that I really like about this series is that it's not just a continuation just to be a continuation. Riordan did not just do this for a cash grab. You can tell that he released the series because he truly wanted to tell this story. This is an entire series on its own. It had its own story, and it didn't have to rely on the original series too much. Sure, it was based on it, and there were many references to it, but it had its own story arc, new characters, its own new conflict, its own new villain, and overall, it's able to hold its own weight very well. Especially when compared to other sequel series that were more of a cash grab, bringing back the same old plot structures and villains like the Star Wars sequels. Heroes of Olympus did not even rely on familiar places like New York, Camp Half-Blood, and Olympus. We were only there for a short amount of time. The majority of the plot takes place in new locations like Camp Jupiter, Rome, Greece, and the Argo 2. 
Rick was able to make this series stand on its own, and for me, it's pretty rare that I enjoy the sequel series more than the original. It's a true testament to how well this was written, and it just proves that Rick wrote this story because he wanted to tell it. This series was a lot more episodic, which I really liked. This was especially true in the later books when we have two different plot lines going, like the Seven going to the Acropolis to stop Gia from rising, while Nico, Reyna, and Hedge took the Athena Parthenos, or how Percy and Annabeth were in Tartarus, meanwhile the rest of the team were journeying to the House of Hades. We get around four chapters for one character, and in those four chapters, we get the sort of journey for that character. It's almost like a quest inside of a larger quest. At times, it felt like I was watching a TV show, and I was all for it. It made me not want to put the book down until I finished the four chapters that sort of break into its own individual story, but it all intertwines into this larger epic tale. This again shows the strength of this new writing style that Rick chose, being from the point of view of many different characters rather than just one. One thing that this series excels at is romance. Riordan knows how to write romance so well. It was also much more interesting here, because unlike in the original series, these are real adult relationships. The characters are much older and more mature, and it makes the romances much stronger. We have three main couples in this series, Annabeth and Percy, Jason and Piper, and Frank and Hazel. Seeing Annabeth and Percy's relationship was a treat, because we had seen them like each other for five books, but we never really saw what happened after they got together, which of course took place at the very end of the fifth book in that series. So it was just great to see how that relationship developed from there. Also, seeing them go to Tartarus together was one of the most intriguing parts of these five books. They rely on each other and give each other strength. They constantly think to themselves that they could not do this without the other, and it made their relationship grow to levels that I never even thought possible. Jason and Piper's relationship was very original. Jason had amnesia, and Piper had memories of their relationship that were not actually real. They were brought before her by the mist. This made the two overcome quite a lot, and ultimately, just like Percy and Annabeth, they give each other strength. Also, seeing Piper get that kiss under the stars that was actually a memory from the mist was a nice touch. Frank and Hazel were great as well. In the relationship, they both independently go from being sort of lost and pathetic to being very powerful, Hazel mastering the mist, and Frank becoming a centurion. And as they themselves get stronger as individuals, their relationship gets stronger alongside it. I also really enjoyed the relationship between Leo and Calypso. Though we did not see much of it, in that short time, you felt this insane bond between the two. And because it wasn't there initially as they sort of hated each other, in their solitude, their feelings slowly crept up on them, which was great writing. And if we talk about romance, we of course have to talk about Nico. Finding out that Nico was gay and in love with Percy was a pretty big shock, but Riordan wrote it perfectly, flashing back to all of these moments from previous books where the two interacted, and it all of a sudden clicked and made perfect sense. After being shocked and thrown off guard, after seeing this and thinking about it, I literally thought to myself, why didn't I see it before? I was also really happy to see Nico make a connection with Will Salas at the end. He deserves the happiness, and I'm interested to see how that develops. Just to go over a few highlights, as I said earlier, I loved Percy and Annabeth going to Tartarus. That was probably my favorite part of the series actually, because we had heard so much about Tartarus, but it was left a mystery, and here, that mystery was finally answered. Also, that cliffhanger at the end of book 3 where they fell into the pit was absolutely insane. I also love the moment where Nico goes before Cupid and we find out his true feelings for Percy and find out that he's gay. I know I just mentioned that, but I just really enjoyed that part. Especially because now we see it from Jason's point of view. Leo's sacrifice was also an amazing moment as well. I really thought he was dead, but then when I got to the last chapter and saw it was from the point of view of Leo, I lost it. I got so hyped. I'm excited to see what they do with Leo going forward, especially now that he and Calypso ran off together. And it was super cool to actually see our heroes in Rome and Greece, where so much of the lore for this series took place. This series also introduced us to the Amazons, the Giants, and a lot of history with the gods. Seeing the Roman and Greek ideology go head to head was a brilliant move by Rick, because it's something that has so much history, and he was able to bring these two different civilizations in history and make them adapt into his own original series with the characters, the camps, and the gods struggling with their identity, going back and forth from the Roman form to their Greek form. The characters, both new and old, all had amazing development, each one transforming and growing so much over the course of the five books. Riordan did an outstanding job with the series, and I'm so excited to move on to the next series in the Riordan universe.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just here to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed to the left. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other things like previews and behind the scenes, become a patron today. Also, you can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life, like my cute dog Loki. I also do some fun stuff on TikTok and Twitter that I think you guys would really enjoy if you enjoy what I do here on this channel. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.